Okay, can you please introduce yourself to us? Uh, I'm Azad from Syria. Uh, I'm 21 years old. Um, I live in Istanbul since a year and a half. I'm working, yeah, working uh, as an interpreter in an organization. And I came here to... I left Syria like a year and six months before, a year and a half. Uh, I went to Kuala Lumpur first, then I came back to Lebanon, then after Lebanon I came to Istanbul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So before you left Syria, what were you doing? Uh, I was studying, studying for advertising and promotion mm -hmm. in a British uh, centre. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, when did you leave Syria exactly? Uh, I left Syria. Uh, on September 2012, mm -hmm. I left Syria mm -hmm. that day. And uh, how did you decide? I had no choice. I had to leave the country almost because of uh, the military thing. I had to do the military in, in Syria because of this. I escaped, you can call it, escaped yeah. from Syria. And uh, were you involved in politics somehow before you left Syria? Um, no, not really. I only like same like the others. I join protests and stuff. Of course, I, against the government, but not really in politics. No, just like an active uh, protester. Were you working with some NGOs or with some You were working with activists. Um, I mean, with the active groups like uh, on media, on in the protest, something like this. Social groups, like, but not the fighters and not. No, actually they're still in Syria, until now they're still in Syria and Damascus, mm -hmm. yeah. So they never left the country? No, they couldn't. They couldn't leave the country because for many reasons they couldn't leave the country. For which reasons? It costs a lot if you want to go out of the, go out of Syria, like to come to Istanbul or to travel to Kuala Lumpur or whatever, mm -hmm. which place it costs a lot for four of us. Or, so that's why I had to leave because of the military and it was very dangerous my situation in Syria, that's why I left. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are they doing? Are their family members now in Syria? Yeah, two brothers are still studying and my mother, she's a house, housewife and yeah. Okay, and now uh, can you keep in touch with them? Uh, yeah, we talk from time to time. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like it's hard to, uh, to get to have a phone call with them because like there is no phones in Syria working any, anymore. From like uh, I can't call them on the phone, but we yeah on online on the internet Skype and applications Viber something yeah how, online. How often are you calling each other, for example? Like it depends on because from my side I can try to contact them all the time, but uh, because of the electricity issue in Syria I can't reach them most of the times. But like every two days, three days, I can make a phone call, a short phone call with them. Yeah. Okay. And um, now I, I will ask about uh, Turkey a little bit. Uh, for example, do you remember uh, what were your first impressions when you first arrived in Turkey? Uh, when I first arrived in Turkey, I, I loved it actually. I loved Istanbul. I arrived at the Turkey airport here. Mm -hmm. it was, the first impression was really good. I felt comfortable. I felt safe. Maybe you can tell us about the day. I arrived at the airport. Then. I arrived at the airport uh, with ten dollars in my pocket, <laughs> and then friend of mine received me from um, received me from the airport to the hotel. And a few Where days. were you coming from? You were coming from. I came from Lebanon, from Lebanon. So you were in Malaysia. I were in Malaysia. Back. Then I went to Lebanon. I met my family for three days. My mom and my uh, two brothers. My dad, no, I couldn't have a chance to meet him because he wasn't with them. He was in. Um, other city than Damascus, he couldn't come to to Lebanon. Yeah, so I met my family for three, four days, and then I stayed there for a month and a half, something like this. Then I came to Istanbul. It was really cool when I arrived to Istanbul. Really cool. I felt comfortable. Uh, yeah, I liked it. First. Where did you stay in the kibbutz? Uh, directly, I went to Aksaray, you know, uh, to the hotel. My friend hotel was. This is the first place like I've seen from Istanbul, first part of the city. Yeah. 
It was good, I liked it. <laughs> okay, then, um, so, okay, let's uh, leave this first day, then, then you met some other people. Like, yeah, uh, sure. I tried to contact my Syrian friends who are staying here already to help me a little bit, find the recommendation, find the room, and for, to find a job as well. Mm -hmm. um, my plans weren't to stay in, in, in Istanbul like for a long time. I plan to stay here just temporarily for a few months and then to try to get the chance to reach uh, Europe. Like, um, I wanted to do that from the beginning. It wasn't my plans to stay in Istanbul for a long time, but yeah. Uh, I failed, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't make it to Europe. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm here. Okay. And, uh, and do you have relatives or friends living in Turkey? Like friends you, you knew before from Syria? Yeah, sure. Many of them. Yeah. Many Syrians. I know lots of Syrians. Mm -hmm. So did you get some help from them? Or you... uh, actually, they were in a. Most of them, they were in bad situations. Like they couldn't eat. Like they helped me. Yeah, they helped me. But. Not that big help. Thing. They are hardly surviving in Istanbul because of like their situations are not good. And, um, most of them were unemployed because of the language, and yeah, so they weren't in a good conditions to, to help me to get that much help. Mm, yeah. And uh, are there some people from your family here? My fa uh, family. Yeah, from my my dad's side. Yeah, like uh, I have two uncles here in Istanbul, but unfortunately we, I couldn't contact them. Because I don't know Turkish. And don't talk about it. Yes, so they speak in Turkish. Yeah, they speak Turkish, and I can speak Turkish, so we couldn't communicate mm -hmm. much. Okay. And, um, and uh, how much contact do you have with uh, Turks in Istanbul? Well, uh, not many, because uh, because I didn't learn, like because I don't know Turkish. That's why I. Uh, most of my friends are foreigners as well, like are here in Turkey for studying students or working here, working abroad. But um, I have many friends, Turkish friends. Mm -hmm. Some. Uh, you, you speak in English with them? Yeah, I speak English speak with Turkish. them, that's why they are not that much. Mm -hmm. And yeah. could you get some help from them when you need it? Sure, most of them they were like, yeah, they offered their, them help. Sometimes housing, they host me for a few days. Some Turkish friends of mine, yeah. And uh, besides friends, uh, I mean, you are encountering some uh, Turkish people every day. Uh, like my, my girlfriend is Turkish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have a Turkish girlfriend? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how did you meet? Can I ask? Um, I was looking for a room to share in a sharing place, and I found advertisement online. It was in English, so I was interested because it was in English. Mm -hmm. After I contacted her, I knew that she doesn't know English at all. <laughs> <laughs> she was looking for someone who speaks English to learn from him, so yeah. We met, I came to the house, she's so nice, and then we started a little bit. She learned English from me, yeah. we practiced some English together as well. But I couldn't learn Turkish from her, no. <laughs> yeah, we've been already together since like eight months already. Eight months. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what about other Turkish people? Um, how, uh, how, how do you think they, they behave towards you? Do you know, were there any occasions that you felt discriminated or you had some negative feelings about people? Like in, in some cases, yes, some people were like, like I, I don't feel welcome anywhere I go. Like uh, Turkish people don't really, like they don't really like to mix with Syrians. and. Um, I don't know how to explain for you. I mean, maybe you can give some anecdotes, you know, something which happened to you. Something happened with me, like it was my first shock of uh, someone like Turkish citizen, how he treated me so bad because of, I couldn't speak Turkish in front of him, and I'm a foreigner, and I'm from Syria. He asked me first. He was the Terezi, the Tyler. I went there, I asked him to fix my trousers or something, and when he knew I'm from Syria, he started to cussing on me and swearing and for many reasons. Just because you're Syrian? Yeah, because, yeah, there is no other reason I didn't do anything for him, just because when he knew I'm Syrian and foreigner, he didn't really like it. Like, I, I wasn't welcome in his shop that much because Syrian, it was my first shock when I, I met someone who's like, who doesn't like Syrians at all, he seems 
racist a little bit. And uh, so, what, why do you think people are behaving this way? Behaving against the Syrians, you mean? Uh -huh. Like, I think they have the right to to don't uh, welcome the Syrians that much in their country. For sure, it's their country. It's a Turkish land, and they live here. But the thing is. Uh, I think I can blame the government for this because the government blame uh, the government sorry promised to taking care of every Syrian and they would support them to get a job to support them to find uh, for housing or something to prepare their camps as well for refugees but they couldn't they failed I guess the, the government they couldn't like the Syrians came here illegal like hundreds and thousands of them they come to Istanbul especially looking for jobs in other cities they couldn't find like jobs and stuff so that's why I think Turkish people they don't really like Syrians because of this they got many of the vacancies here for jobs whatever whatever also like I've heard from some Turkish people when they say like um, Syrian people are just lazy and losers and they get money from the government for doing nothing for being refugee and for being just staying here in this country and they don't even try to learn Turkish Actually, most of them are trying to learn Turkish, but it's not an easy language for us to... Like, for me, I tell you from my experience, it wasn't easy for me to learn Turkish. The grammar, it's totally different than English and than Arabic as well. And for many reasons, like, they should... They are behaving like this because of rumors, because of uh, Syrians getting money, because of... Uh, most of them say before Syrians, Istanbul was way better. I mean, Istanbul and other cities as well, because but Istanbul is the center. It's like most of the Syrians are in Istanbul, so they said the prices before were more cheaper. The accommodations, the houses, and everything rents was more cheaper. After Syrians came, the whole, all prices went higher, and uh, everything became more expensive. And like they have many reasons to behave again, behave bad again. Syrians, but like as a as my personal experience, I like I met. Uh, it was unusual from some people like to do such a thing for me. Like for example, one time I had like a little fight with someone in a public place in a cafe. He was telling me like you're wasting your money. You sit here and you drink beer, maybe your money and most of Syrians are sleeping in the streets it's none of my business and none of his business as well like I can't do anything for Syrians like they blame us like okay I can count myself as a um, medium class like I, I have job now I work I, I can pay my rent I can pay my transportation my food and everything I can take care of myself I can survive in Istanbul I can call it like I'm not comfortable living now I live in a sharing places and like yeah it's not easy for me so I can't do anything for Syrians or other Syrians. So some Turkish people blame me, like, why don't you care of your brothers, your Syrians? Something like this, some stuff like this. Like, it's, like I can't do anything for them, really. And for other things, like, hospitals are for free for Syrians. Yeah, this thing is, like, it's true, it's for free for Syrians. When you show your residence, it's for free for Syrians. But I don't think we should, like, Turkish people should be jealous of this thing. It's a hospital, it's not a shopping mall for free, you know, it's a hospital, people go there just for recovery and stuff and they really don't have money for these things, it's too expensive for them in Istanbul. But I'm in general, like, because of uh, most of the reasons to behave like this against Syrian, because of the government, they didn't organize uh, better than this accommodation, uh, conditions for Syrians to survive here or to put them schools to learn Turkish. They tried, they tried, and they, I think they failed, I don't know. There is no uh, active organization working here, like UN or any other organization for refugees. They are not, um, they are not useful here, like they can't help you with anything if you are Syrian. They can help Iraqi people, maybe they can help Afghanistan people. They can't help Syrians because the Turkish government said we would take care of Syrians, so no other organization can work on this thing or project something about Syrians. Yeah, so for for many reasons, like some people are a bit racist against Syrians because of like the same the things I told you already. 
and um, besides this discrimination, if you, for example, if you compare your daily life in Syria that you had uh, two years ago mm -hmm. and your daily life now, what, what are the differences? What are the major differences? Like, of course, there is no comparing between for my situation in here and Syria. Syria is my my hometown, my, my home, and comparing to my life in the last part. I'm glad of being in Istanbul now. I survived. The last uh, year for me in Syria was terrible. It was really dangerous and it was really full of risk and stuff in Syria. But before, before the revolution started in Syria, and uh, yeah, everything was fine. I didn't ex even expect myself leaving in Istanbul or in Turkey. Out of Syria, I mean, not only in Istanbul. I didn't think to travel before, like just to travel because I want to escape from my country. No, it, everything was fine. I, Syria was really good. Like Damascus was, uh, is a good, good, good country to live in. I was very comfortable for sure, not comparing with Istanbul with how I'm doing now. And yeah, maybe I thought before to. I was thinking to travel only for studying, maybe studying for two, three years or something, finish part of my studies and go back to Syria. But I didn't plan to go out of Syria forever, like like how I'm doing now. Like I have no plans to go back to Syria anymore. And um, and the, like, are you facing many situations uh, that you need some help? Like you need some help for language, maybe, or you are searching for an apartment and you don't know where to go. Sure. And what do you do in, in such situations? Like, uh, sure. In most of the things, if I need anything to do here, as you said, for apartments or anything, I need someone to be beside me, like next mm -hmm. to me. So I usually ask my Turkish friends for some help like this. And sometimes I need a sponsor for to getting a house or to get a room for something. Because, you know, also, like, uh, they don't trust Syrians anymore. You should pay extra deposit if you want to get an apartment. You should bring a kefil with you, a sponsor someone. Yeah, so it's not... Uh, most of the time, yes, in Turkey, I need, I need someone to, to help me. And is there any official place or an organization that you can ask help from? Like, uh, for me as a single person here, I didn't really look for organization to help because I've heard from other Syrians who are mm -hmm. living here, like, they only help the needy families, Syrian needy families, and they don't, they don't really uh, help uh, single persons. Uh, like, for me, I'm single here, I'm alone, I'm, I don't have kids, I don't have family, so I don't really get support food or money or something, no, there is no supporting by any, mm -hmm. by any side. I, I wanted to ask you about this because uh, there are many rumors, like we are hearing it maybe every day, uh -huh. that uh, and the first rumor is about money, that uh, Syrians are getting some money. 800 lira, yes, exactly, 800, 800, lira, 800 lira by the Turkish government, like, let's be real, let's be logical. A little bit. If I get 800 lira in Istanbul by the government every month, I would be super glad. I would be really fine. Better than Turkish people, I guess. I would be really comfortable in Istanbul. 800 lira is enough. Like Maybe I can find other job, part-time job for 500 lira and I would be fine. 1,300, it's okay. It's good, yeah. But no, there is no money, there is no support, unfortunately. No. So who is getting this? There is, there is no such money at all? There is no, there is no money for Syrians like... Maybe they get some welfare, some money from uh, organization for needy family, really needy family, like, uh, and not 800 lira, no. I've heard like 300 lira maybe for real needy family by other organizations, by organizations like, or by, uh, like donating something, I don't know how to explain. Um, like a donation? Yeah, donation. They can get some money by donation. but. As a regular thing, as a mm -hmm. normal, usual thing, like every Syrian get 800 lira, this is not true. So no. government gives no money to... No, 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 no. We paid for our residence. I paid 200 lira for the government, for the residence. I paid money for the residence. Yeah. Uh, okay, and, uh, and about food, you are saying you're not getting any food? I'm not getting any food because I'm... Uh, as I, I'm a single person, I'm, I'm not with the family, I don't have family, but families, yes, they get some food, like uh, oil, sugar, salt, some small box to just to mm -hmm. help them. And uh, the second thing people are talking all the time in Turkey is, uh, why don't Syrians uh, go to the camps and uh, they're coming to the cities? 
I was actually wondering the same thing, like why Syrians are coming to Istanbul and they can't get a job and they sleep in the streets like beggars and homeless people. I asked many of them, of the people who is begging in the streets, and they say just like, uh, no, life is in Istanbul in the street better than the camps on the borders, on the cities from out of Istanbul. I mean, they escaped from the camps. They said it's terrible there. The food is not enough. Nothing is. They were in a bad situation. That's why they choose to to be in the streets instead of uh, camps. What did you hear about the camps? Can you tell us a bit more? Like in winter, it was really cold. In winter, it was really cold. That's the only thing I, I heard from some people. And like, it's very crowded and it's not organized well for like. It's not good for anyone, I don't know, not even if they are refugees. It's not good for anyone to live in that camp. It's not a good place to live, to, to raise your kids in the camp. But unfortunately, you see them in the streets are begging and homeless people in Istanbul. Uh, I, I don't know, they, they know better than me, so they escape from the camp and they prefer to be in the streets, means the camp are really bad, in a bad situation, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, also? The, the last rumor I will ask you about is about elections. Uh, you know that we had the local elections in March, in last March, and uh, during the elections uh, we heard many things like uh, Syrians voted for uh, for AKP. There were some Syrians uh, voting for AKP, and, uh, and uh, I, I think it was uh, like they changed citizenship. They did some arrangements uh, to get some more votes. Have you ever heard such a thing? Have Syrians you... are voting. Yes, Syrians. Uh, I don't think we are not allowed to vote. Our residence doesn't allow us to vote, so I don't think it's a. I don't know. Like from the uh, from the social media, I read about this uh, mm -hmm. Syrian situations in Turkey. We were talking about this thing. Like we won't be involved in this political things happening in Istanbul, in Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, as same as happened in Egypt. Syrians start to support the government, then they start to support other things. So they got involved in that. Mm -hmm. uh, mess we can call it, I don't know, but here in Turkey I, I've never heard about anyone like we can't vote I'm sure about this, we mm -hmm. can't vote Yes, officially no Yeah, officially no, we can't vote for any party, for any groups, for any someone, but uh, yeah And uh, so you, you talked a little bit about how difficult it is uh, to get an apartment in Istanbul and can you tell us what was your ex what was your experience when you searched for an apartment? Yeah, sure. Like uh, I tried to look online online for apartment, and I asked someone to reach to call and talk to them. So the owner, the owner, like um, most of the owners were refusing Syrians when they hear just like on the phone, uh, Syrian, yes, okay, I need double deposit, and he needs uh, kefil, he needs sponsor if you want to get the apartment. And most of them, they refuse at all. They say, no, no, we don't give Syrians. They don't give Syrians at all. Yeah, so it's a try. It's, uh, it's difficult to get an apartment here as a Syrian. Not only apartment, many things. Like, as a Syrian, they, they are using people here. Also in jobs and vacancies. Like, I know all people here in Istanbul work for 12 hours, not only Syrians, but Syrians are working for 12 hours for nothing, like for very low salary, like 800 lira. No one can, could survive in Istanbul in 800 lira or 700 lira for 12 hours working daily. It's too much, I guess. So mm -hmm. um, life is getting difficult for Syrians here. It's getting more and more difficult day by day. Like first when I arrived here, uh, it wasn't a big problem if you want to get an apartment. If you have money and you are Syrian, you are welcome any, anytime. But day by day when Syrians become became more and more in Istanbul, the prices mm -hmm. became higher. Like usually the landlords, they make the price higher because they are Syrians and they need this house for sure. So they are using them at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's getting difficult. Like now, you no, know, I don't think I can get apartment. Uh, if I, I should, as I told you, I should pay the whole deposit and I have a sponsor. It works maybe, but other than that, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you said it changed from the time. Uh, you yeah, came it's here changed. And, uh, do, do you think uh, there are some other big changes uh, you know, since the time you, you came here? 
about finding housing, about uh, Yeah, finding all things are getting difficult. More and more getting difficult. To find job now, mm -hmm. um, like as I told you in general, they don't trust Syrians anymore. They don't trust them at all. I know some Syrians are making some troubles here as well. Lots of Syrians have heard about them. They are making some troubles. They sometimes they they cheat the owner, something like this. They escape, they move, like you know, they are like just roaming around Turkey, so they don't settle down in a place. Most of them. Mm -hmm. So that's why they don't trust Syrians anymore. And it's like it's getting difficult for in general. In, and uh, there was also a big difference between uh, you no know, people from different social classes came from Syria. Mm -hmm. So there are people begging on the street, but there are also some people living in some uh, very good flats and uh, some uh, good, uh, good uh, areas in Istanbul. Uh, I don't know, what is your comment on this? My comment on them? Like, the rich people who left Syria most of them are in Europe now, not even in Turkey. Most of them, they got visas and huge bank accounts and stuff. They left to Europe directly. Mm -hmm. But the ones who's, uh, who's living in Turkey, the rich people, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they own factories here because, okay, they, they closed their factories in Syria. Now they opened here again mm -hmm. in, in Turkey. Their life is easier also for residents and for everything. The Turkish government are helping them. They don't get a residence as mine, it's different residence for businessmen for something like this, even if he's from Syria. But mm -hmm. if you have a lot of money, of course, it's changed. It's not the same treatment as, as they do for me. Like, it's totally different for rich people. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, as you say, the Syrians are sleeping in the streets and some of them are very rich and they live in uh, very expensive areas. Um, they are the worst people, those kind of people, the rich Syrians who are staying in Istanbul, the worst people for me, my, from my side, I mean. Most of them became rich after the revolution, and that's why, like... Uh, How did they get rich? You know, it's a war, like everyone, it's war now in Syria, they get rich by making deals with weapons, maybe, some of them. Many things, like, can make you rich if you are, I don't know, I don't want to go <laughs> no, no, not it's that fine. much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, you mentioned the uh, residence about uh, getting residence. Permit. Yeah. Uh, can you explain us how do you get a residence permit in Turkey as a student? Uh, first, when I arrived here, I stayed for three months. It was a touristic visa, not the normal one. Mm -hmm. Then I applied online. It was easy. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, it was easy. Uh, appointment online, and then I went to Emnia. I asked for. Um, the residence, I paid 200 lira and it was fine, it was easy, but now they are not renewing the residence for me, like my re my residence now expired and they are, I can't renew it anymore, every, every time I go there I ask for to renew, to get a new appointment to renew my residence, they say we are waiting for answer from Ankara or something like this, they give many, like, it's hard to get a visa and a residence here anymore. And I don't think they would give residence for Syrians for later. I don't think. No one is getting residence now, now in Turkey, Syrians, no one. It's really difficult. Like you apply and they give you appointment after four months. When you come back after four months, they say, okay, go for other three months. We, we didn't get any answer from Ankara yet. So I don't know how it would be our situation here without residence and without things. And most of the jobs ask for residence. So now it's the... It's the worst thing could happen in Turkey. No residence, no job, and yeah. And you cannot work without residence. It must be difficult. Like you can work without mm -hmm. residence in a maybe in a restaurant, in a bar, or something like this. But if you want to work in a company or in a office job, something like this, you need residence for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now uh, I will leave Turkey <laughs> and I will go to Syria. Okay. Uh, I, I just have a few questions about Syria, uh, some very general questions. So, uh, for example, how much are you informed about what is going on in Syria now? Can you follow the news and uh, what do you do? Um, actually, I'm not following the news that much nowadays no. because mm -hmm. I, I don't believe them anymore. I don't trust them, the media in general about the news in Syria. I talk about radical Muslims and they talk about the regime. They talk, 
like now there there is many groups are fighting against each other in Syria, so I don't really follow the news. Uh, and um, what do you think about the Syrian media? Syrian media, hundred percent. I don't trust them for sure. I don't mm -hmm. trust them in anything in the weather. I don't trust them. The news, Syrian mm -hmm. news, no. And international media. Um, Like everyone knows the media is controlled by someone. <laughs> so they show you only what they want to show you. Like now they show you Muslim radicals are doing progress in Syria and they are fighting regime. And it's, it's not true. The radical Muslims are fighting against Kurdish people in the north and they are not doing any progress against the regime. They are not fighting the regime. No one is fighting the regime anymore. That's why I don't trust them and I'm not interested in this news anymore. I'm not interested at all. No one is fighting the regime, no one, like they are fighting for money and oil and weapons, that's it. No one is fighting the regime, like every, like they are dealing with, with each other, they keep it up, they keep it warm, the area, they keep it in a danger, they keep it in a, like a, the atmosphere of war, though. so many people like are making money of this thing, so it won't end in 10 years, I don't think it will end, finish this problem, no, there is no Syria anymore, for me, my personal opinion, mm -hmm. as how I know about Syria. And do you think other countries could do something about this? For example, um, they were discussing about a possible intervention last year, mm -hmm. and then it was like a change in the last minute. They decided not to go into Syria. Would you support such a thing? I don't expect any help from anyone from other countries, no. I don't know how to explain. You mean you are hopeless that they would help? Or that they would work for their benefit? That's what you think? Yeah. Everyone is working for his benefit. No one think about. No one care about Syria anymore. No. They don't care about the citizens. They don't care about the land. They care about money, oil, something like this. That's it. So you don't have any possible solutions in your mind for the situation in Syria. If you could change uh, anything, you could change. What you would change? Syria now need. Uh, an honest voting, something like this, for someone who can lead this country and just um, to fix the situation. I mean, we need someone. Uh, let's skip this. I don't know. I don't know how to explain. Really. It's hard for me in English and Arabic. I can explain for you as much as you want, but I don't know how to explain for you. <laughs> I I couldn't ask it. I'm also curious about uh, how, uh, how Syrians are keeping their network because now uh, there are many Syrians living in different countries, uh -huh. there are many Syrians living in Turkey and how do you keep in touch? Do you have some special way, some special networks? Uh, actually, like uh, they based on social networks like exactly Facebook for example, mm -hmm. many pages are for Syrians. Mm -hmm. Like there is a page called Syrians in Istanbul, Syrians in Turkey, Syrians in Germany. Yeah, there is a lot of uh, pages supporting, like for Syrians to keep them in touch in, in the communities, mm -hmm. wherever they are in, in the world, like in Turkey, out of Turkey. Yeah, there is many, many pages for Syrian people to keep it, to keep them in touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look for vacancies, look for housing, look for. They help each other if there is any uh, donation or something. They help each other through the pages, through that social media. In general, I'm not uh, I'm not into politics that much, and uh, Turkish politics exactly. I like I don't I don't even understand it. I don't understand it much. Like I hear from Turkish people, like what do you think about the situation in politics? Sometimes I mm -hmm. ask, but I don't really get uh, an answer for what I'm. How is it going on here? I don't really understand it. That's why I'm not really into politics. Mm -hmm. Turkish but politics you heard something. What did you hear? Like when they started in Gezepar, 
I was wondering if is it against Syrian at the first place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I went to Istiklal and I was afraid just walking in Istiklal. What the hell, why, why is all this happening now? And I asked one girl, I didn't choose a guy. Uh, is it, do you speak English? Yes. Is it against Syrians here? Uh, and she said, uh, she couldn't understand much. And she said, yes, for me. And I was super afraid, like, what against, I said. And then someone came, he said, yeah, yeah, just like Syria. Just like Syria here, because you know they burn fire and they make a lot of prayer and stuff. So I, I don't really understand it, that's why I'm not really into it. So I ask many opinions about it. Mm. What do you think of the future? What is the meaning of this Gezi Park now? Is it the main reason for this protesting and demonstrations just for Gezi Park or there is other reasons? I ask many people, but I don't really understand it. No, no, no I don't really understand it. And uh, do you know about Turkish politicians? Like, would you recognize their faces? Do you know their names? Do you know about the parties? Only uh, Erdogan, a party. I don't support, but I know <laughs> the most popular one. Okay. Okay. And uh, again, if you connected with the Syrian situation, how how do you evaluate Turkish government's attitude towards uh, Syria, the Syrian crisis in general? Sorry again. Like, uh, how did the uh, Turkish government's reaction to, uh, to to the crisis in Syria? Do, do you think it was appropriate? Because there are, for example, many people in Turkey. Uh, they think Turkish government was um, too much involved in, uh, in the Syrian crisis, and uh, they gave too much of opinions. Mm -hmm. Too much involved, for sure, because just Syria and Turkey are neighbors. Just like uh, they can only open borders for people are dying and. Syrian side, mm -hmm. so they are involved, yes, but mm -hmm. for, for many reasons, political reasons, for mm -hmm. humanitarian reasons, they open border, they are too much involved, but... Mm -hmm. um, but besides this, besides opening the border, mm -hmm. uh, for example, Erdogan uh, gave many speeches about Syria, calling to Assad that uh, he should leave the government, and uh, uh, they wanted uh, an intervention for some time, Like everyone is trying to end this uh, problem happening in Syria, let's call it, I don't know, the issue. And it's, it's the right to say, like, I think, yeah, I support. it's the right to say. They should, everyone should be involved in these mm. crimes happening in Syria against Assad. Everyone, after the chemical weapons, after many things, they should be involved in this. I don't know, maybe I. And uh, and you already said that uh, you think there were there were some wrong things that Turkish government did about Syrians living in Turkey. There were uh, there were some uh, wrong policies uh, towards Syrian people. Things could be better. Government could do things better. They can only like uh, open the residence again, give residence for people, and for cheaper cheaper prices a little bit. Some people they. They really don't have this 200 lira to get. Now that I think they make it cheaper if they want to give residence anymore. Mm. Um, that's the most they can do for Syrians. I don't know. I can't find a solution for them. Like uh, there are millions here, you know, thousands and millions of Syrians here. Mm -hmm. Like at least if they make the camp a better place to live for the real needy people who need these camps, they, that's the most they can do, and just to make it easier a little bit them to find jobs and stuff like to support owners to, of companies to support um, landlords and stuff to help Syrians a little bit support them like by taxes by something to help Syrians a little bit that's all what they can do right okay, I don't know. okay. Um, uh, so I, I have just uh, a few other questions to, to end the interview and um, first of all can you imagine yourself happily living in Turkey you already kind of answered this, but I will just ask you again. Uh, after 10 years, I think I would be fine. I would be happy for sure. If I learn Turkish, everything would be easier for me. I could find better chances for a job uh, if I learn Turkish, because Turkish is the main like 
thing for anyone, not only for Syrian. If someone wanted to live in Istanbul, in Turkey in general, he must learn the language. Without the language, yeah, like you can't do anything. But it must be doctor. very difficult if you don't have, you know, if you don't have much money, you can accept exactly. the language courses. Exactly. Like, I, there isn't. It's not about money only. About it's about money a little bit. It's. Uh, there is a cheap centers to learn Turkish language, but the thing is, there is no time. If you are working for 12 hours, how could you learn Turkish? The only way to learn Turkish is to practice with your colleagues, to talk with your neighbors, something like this. You can improve your language slowly, slowly. But to do like a regular courses and uh, just put all your attention on Turkish language, it would be hard a little bit. For most of Syrians, for me I would say, and for most of Syrians, you work for 12 hours, you have no time to, to, learn, to, to learn Turkish, you know, you have no time. Only the only way is to mix with people, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so in 10 years I would mix enough with Turkish people, I guess I would learn, mm -hmm. maybe. So hope. if you spoke Turkish, if mm -hmm. you had a job here, would you consider becoming a Turkish citizen, for example? Uh, Having Turkish passport, becoming Turkish? It would be, uh, it would be good for sure. Mm -hmm. If I get a citizenship, it would be fine. Sure, it would, it would fix my situation for mm -hmm. way more better. With the people, I'm citizen. Mm -hmm. After ten years, after being ten years surviving, I'm a citizen and stuff. Yeah, it would be good. Mm -hmm. Sure. And um, and you said you already tried going to Europe. Mm -hmm. So let's say this Turkish citizenship, this good scenario, is not possible. Mm -hmm. Would you consider going to Europe again? Like trying to go to Europe? Actually, I tried first when I arrived to Istanbul mm -hmm. for my wow. first period of staying here. I was trying to think ab about my opportunities here and mm -hmm. how it will be if I can cross borders and reach Europe. So I tried before but I failed, I couldn't. I tried to cross the borders mm -hmm. um, walking to Europe. I failed, I couldn't. But now, yes, I, for me, I want, like, uh, I prefer to be in Europe better. I would try, I would have a better chances there, better opportunities to continue education, for work, for example, to learn the language. It would be like, life would be easier for me in Europe, for sure. Mm -hmm. do, do you know many people who managed to go to Europe already? I know many people arrived there already. They are in Sweden since like two years or a year and a half, something like this. I met them here and now they are in Sweden. They got their residency and everything is fine for them. They are not really happy, they like Turkey a little bit, but... Yeah, mm -hmm. They are fine, they are doing well, like they are learning the language in a scheduled centers and stuff they mm -hmm. are working on some of them not studying they are working on uh, Bugatti, Bugatti, you know, uh, um, vocational vocational you know vocational things yeah to careers and stuff to improve their careers yeah so they are doing i think they are doing good there yeah. in europe would be better than and uh, what do you think about the uh, refugee policies of Refugee policies, like, uh, I think it's fair. They mm -hmm. are trying to help them to the most, like to Syrians there. Mm -hmm. Of course, Europe is not the heaven for Syrians if they reach there, like they go to the sea, they go in a danger, or something like this, just to reach Europe. It's not the heaven there, it's not that pinky world, but it's, life would be easier there for, for every Syrian, like better than Turkey, definitely. Sure, mm -hmm. yeah. I would also try again. <laughs> And uh, then I will just close with uh, one last question. How do you see the future for yourself? The future? Mm -hmm. Do you think things will get better? Are you hopeful? Um, the future is mystery, I don't know. For me, I don't know. I have no home to go back if I fail in my next steps. I have no home to base on, to go back. I say, okay, I fail, I would go back home. There is no way to turn and go back home. I, there is no Syria anymore for me. But uh, we keep on hope, I don't know, keep hoping, and I don't know. <laughs> thank you very much for this interview. You're welcome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs>